Oh, are we zoomed in? I think we're zoomed. No, wait, just a second. I'm not sure if we're zoomed in or not, but hello and welcome to my um, French countryside life. I just want you guys to know that I'm never coming back and I'm here to look for my prince because I've, I've found the castle. I found, actually, I don't know if you know this, but the French word for castle is chateau, which I've just learned from my friend Nuha. We, um, we, do you actually know the name of this chateau? I think I saw the name. I'm not going to try it. Just say it again. Chenonceau. Okay, well, that's the name of the French castle, which is where I'm going to be living. Because, look, I'm going to try and turn it around, but there's lots of people, so it's going to be hard to really get the, ma oh, the the essence of it and how, like, the trees, it's like the most gorgeous boulevard type. I'm going to, let me just turn this around. Oh. Although you can't really see. You know what? I'm gonna have to film. There's even a moat! Stop, you guys. There's a bloody moat. It's over. It's over, guys. I'm never going back. I am never going back. Honestly, I kind of just want to focus this entire vlog on this hedge but I'm not even sure you'll get just how perfect this hedge is. But I feel like maybe if I just focus on one thing, you'll be able to understand just how beautiful this setup is. But also look at the rest of the garden. And I don't know if you can really hear it, but there's like ambient music. I think it's live. I think it's someone on, it's like opera music, opera music, yeah. It's so beautiful and everywhere. And then there's an actual moat that surrounds the actual chateau. Oh, and then also, this place smells like horses in the most charming, luxurious way I could possibly describe. It's just so beautiful. Everything is so beautiful. All right, so this girl is jumping in with a voiceover because I was just incredibly overwhelmed, but overwhelmed in a good way. I was just, I was trying to do the most. I was trying to capture photos on my phone and insta stories and then i'd be like no it's a real and so i kind of just forgot to talk into the camera but this was us touring the chateau chenonceau so <laughs> i know i've butchered it but i'm still gonna try um it is about three hours out of paris and it was built in the 16th century and the fact that it's still standing and still so stunning is just beyond me this was La Roche Posay's welcome dinner and welcome experience. So after this, we had we had dinner, um, and it was ahead of the Derm Live, which is actually the next the next morning. Um, and they invited over, I, I think, over two hundred people, so maybe about two hundred and fifty people. And if you don't know, the Derm Live is something that they have every year. But this year, they had it in person. I guess the last couple of years, things just didn't go according to plan um, for everyone across the world. Uh, but this time, they invited us to come and experience their newly opened thermal center. And I'll show you guys in um, the next couple of clips, actually. But yeah, this was just incredible. It was so beautiful. Another really cool thing about France this time of year. Look at the time. 9 9.04 p.m. And look how bright it is. Sunset at 10. from La roche Posay. not just oh I probably already said this but not just the <laughs> center the thermal center but the town itself is called La roche Posay. I don't know if a lot of people know that but yeah the town is called La roche and I think legend has it I'm not entirely sure but legend has it that um, 
ages ago, ages ago, there was a man who was riding his horse and his horse had eczema or some skin condition and he went into the stream um, and it kind of cleared things up for the horse and I think that's what started everything off. I mean, don't quote me, I might, entirely, I might not be right with that. And also, I'm not entirely sure that story is true either way. <laughs> but I think that's what, um, well, that's what they say. Um, it was about a one and a half hour bus ride. So have I just been sleeping the entire bus ride? Yes. Do I feel like I'm still half asleep? Absolutely. Uh, but we're about to have coffee, so hopefully that will kind of like wake the system up. Um, and it looks like we're having a derm life. Can you see the giant um, Nipica bottle there? There's a Sikaplast bottle behind. And I think that's what people are waiting. People are waiting in line to take a photo of, and I think my team is also doing the same. Uh, and then it's just like a day of learning, I guess. I'm not sure, but we'll figure out together. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the day that cemented my deep respect for the brand. The day started off with the actual Derm Live session, which had all these speakers and skin experts um, and just people, regular people sharing their stories. And one of them, oh my goodness, I actually shared this on my Instagram stories. I'm going to link it in case you are interested. But one of the speakers shared how his eczema was so severe that he had to take up to like three scalding hot showers at night to take away from the itching because it would lead to severe blisters and bleeding. And it was so, it's, it's the worst I'd ever heard. Um, and how this thermal center and his experience here was one of the things that helped relieve his pain and stress. It really affected his life. And so if you didn't know, there's an actual thermal center in the town, La roche Bose, and you can come in for a week or two weeks or three weeks and go through the different treatments, multiple treatments a day actually. And it's open to people with um, severe skin conditions like eczema or burn victims or even cancer patients. Um, I didn't even know this, but they also have makeup and this makeup is specially formulated to deal with sensitive skin and I mean really sensitive skin. And so the reason I completely fell in love with the brand was because I understood that it's really about changing lives. Like I, I get it, like acne and actually I'll actually even give you my story towards the end of this video. I'm going to show you guys actual before and after photos for me. And I get it, like acne is one of the things that we hear a lot about, but the brand and what La Roche-Posay are doing, it's, it's really about revolutionizing the science and the formulas and these products so that they serve people whose lives have been, you know, changed for the worse because of whatever skin conditions they have. Um, and so just, I just, I was going around falling in love with the brand and just being so proud that I'm working with a brand who are doing the work and it's not just about talking the talk but they're actually walking the walk we even got to experience the thermal center um this pool was heated and i was happy to stay for the rest of the day but we actually had facials that, that were booked in but in the next few clips you'll actually see me going through the process of examining my skin and then getting the results and then getting the product that changed the game for me. But I'll share that with you towards the end of this video. of the skin the micro relief yeah it's not so smooth yes uh, some marks on the surface yeah yeah and the visible pore you have got uh, oily skin or yeah. combination skin. combination yes yeah so uh, this diagnostic it confirms your uh, nature yeah. of the skin okay so it shows issues with texture texture uh, you, you need so something like a uh, soft micro peeling 
like if at like serum, like which one? Like if at like serum, if at like serum, okay. Soft of my um, soft micro peeling. Okay, okay. So that is texture. Yes. And wrinkle, uh, uh, wrinkles. There. Okay. Oh my gosh. And what is Some that? marks. Marks. Okay. Yeah. Dark marks. And what is um, that? The dark marks, um, um, they, they arrive on the surface. Yeah, yeah. Okay. The and UV the, damage. Yeah. About, uh, no UV damage. Huh? No UV damage. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, little wetness. Okay. And the, the tea, tea zone. Oily. Okay. Okay. So, before we continue, I have a couple more clips from Paris that I want to share with you guys. But I feel like I want to share with you what my honest thoughts on Paris were. <laughs> and I, 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 I really debated on like whether to share this or not because I don't want to be like funny about it or weird or party poopa or negative or anything. But at the same time, like I, I just had this really strong feeling about the city. And I just, and ev almost everyone I've said this to, pretty much everyone I've said this to actually, has been like, yep, same was our group. Like, same feelings. Um, and that is, I, I didn't love Paris. <laughs> and I, I just, I didn't love Paris. That's the truth. I kind of, oh, so first of all, the trip was amazing. I still, you'll still find me back in France at some point down the line in my future. 100% gonna go back to France. Um, but I think Paris has been romanticized for so long on TV, in books, in every like romantic storytelling or any, whatever, you name it, Paris has always been like the city. And I think I expected to kind of just like get to Paris and be like, oh my God, I get it. I get it. It's like coming through me from, from like the streets of Paris and I can feel it radiating through my body. I don't know what it was supposed to be, but I was like, mm -hmm. if ever there was a place, 100%, it's going to be Paris. Um, but it, I just never got that. I just never got like at so many moments, I kind of was like, that's it? That's it? Like, to be very honest, the first one was the Eiffel Tower. And I kind of alluded to this in the last video you watched. Um, I just was like, oh, oh, that's it? And of course, it's just a big metal structure. Like, I, I've, I, I've seen the Eiffel Tower on TV, in pictures, read about it. But I just, it, it's like, in my head, I was like, I don't know what I expected it to do. I don't know what I expected it to do. I don't know how I expected it to feel. But when I drove past it, I distinctly remember feeling, oh, I don't know if I'm gonna, if I'm gonna make time out of my trip to come back here. Because I had the last two days after the Derm Live at La Roche-Posay, we were gonna go back to Paris. And then I got myself two extra uh, full days to kind of just sightsee. So when I drove past it from the airport, first time into Paris, I was like, oh, yeah, no, I'm gonna have to see what else to do. Like, I'll, yeah, I'll figure it out. I'll see what to, what else to do. And then even when I um, drove past Arc de Triomphe, I was like, oh, that that thing there is, that's it? <laughs> that, that's what we line up at like 6 a.m. to take pictures of? And maybe, I remember even thinking to myself, maybe if I saw it at night, like the Eiffel Tower, and it was like, just like all the, lights i would be like oh i get it but if i think back to how i felt when i um was in different places whether that's new york or um istanbul or um marrakesh and isawira in morocco um or even barcelona like there were certain moments where i felt like overwhelmed, overwhelmed in a really beautiful way by 
the architecture or the experience or something but like Paris I kind of I kind of only felt that when I was in the Jardin Jardin which are the gardens and that's the one I went to the Luxembourg or um, what's it Tuileria I don't know if I've, I don't know if I've said that correct, correctly but the second one Tuileria <laughs> is the one that has uh, the Louvre the Louvre um, I'm really I'm really practicing my French if you couldn't already tell I'm really insisting we're gonna speak French here, or like at least French accents for as long as we can. Um, but the gardens are, are where the parks, that's where I was like, oh wow, this is like beautiful. And certain like places, cause I got lost so many times, so many times while in Paris, I kind of just would find myself in like different corners and like find a cafe, sit down and just have my little Parisian moment, sipping on a coffee and just look, people stare, people watching and reading my book too and enjoy it like i was also deliberate i'm gonna try as many french foods as i possibly can and actually i feel like i went through a number of them but the actual city i i, I don't know if that's it and i've i've thought about this long <laughs> too so a few people i spoke to were like oh yeah exact same thing like i, I think it's maybe hyped up or there's certain elements that aren't the cleanest and you just think oh i don't know about that um whatever it is it just didn't live up to the hype but at some point I was like oh, I know I know what the problem is I'm just not like a billionaire <laughs> I was like I know that's it because maybe if my hotel room was this like grand palatial Parisian hotel room with the most beautiful view of hat of the Eiffel Tower and the like city lights just across the balcony maybe I'd be like I see the glamour or if I was like, be, it was if I was able to get into the, the Louvre without having to line up, maybe then I'd be like, this is it. Like, and just have space to, my, to myself to walk around because I saw pictures of certain celebrities like in the Louvre and no one was around them. I was like, there's that. Of course there's that. Like, really, 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 like, famous people aren't going to be mixing with the rest. I was like, oh, that's what I need. That's what I need. <laughs> But obviously that's not it because then everywhere you go would be like a really a really incredible experience because you're just having like the luxuries of luxuries and i don't think in the other places i had that the other places i've been to but there was just something like there was a charm to all these other places that i'm not sure i got in paris i didn't go to all the spots and actually i did get someone kind of give me the non-touristy places the hot spots to go to um but I didn't get a chance to go to all of them. And I thought I was going to go back to Paris at the end of this month. But I've actually cancelled my trip. Because what we had intended on doing is not happening anymore. So I just was like, why am I... I don't know if I want to go back there. And also, it's actually really expensive. And maybe it's because it's the summer and everyone is there um, during summer. But I was like, what? They, like, what? It's... Yeah, it, it it's an expensive city too. So that's just, I just wanted to share my honest thoughts there. And look, you may go there and fall madly in love with not just the city, but someone in Paris. Maybe that might be your experience and you'll just be like, are you kidding me? Paris is the most beautiful place ever. Um, but I just, there were just, I don't know. Maybe, maybe when I go back, I'll try like, to not hype it up in my head and then it'll be like perfection <laughs> i don't know but i just wanted to share that and then now i can insert some clips that i took at the last garden i went to which is the tuilerion I, i'm probably butchering it so I'm, I'm sure i'll be putting on the screen the actual names of the gardens but it was so beautiful and if there's one thing you have to give it up to the french for it is their landscaping and how much detail and attention goes into just every angle and tree and corner and grass and flower. It's just so well thought out. And there are all these seats that are sprawled across the gardens where you can just sit down and either enjoy the book that you're reading or work a little bit or just bask in the sun or catch up with a friend over lunch. And I just, I've, I completely was enthralled by that part. 
I think it's just also because that's not something you ever see here in Nairobi. Yes. Oh, well, not in the same, not at the same level. Definitely not at the same level. So that part just, oh, I could not get enough of it. And I also do think that there are other parts of France that probably hold more of a charm than Paris. And Paris has probably just been hyped up a little too much. Like the southern part of France where the, the you know, I think that might be more like it or maybe like the beach like the shoreline maybe that part might be more my vibe who knows we'll just have to go back and see um but yeah all in all i think for me what this trip did was just confirm that la roche posay is the bomb like they are the ones they are the ones they have i don't know i just kind of felt so proud to be working with a brand that has put this much attention attention to detail and to their products and to their formulas and i mean i already am um, like i'm you know i i think through the collaborations i i i get into and the partnerships i have but this one and i think just this trip made it so clear that this brand is just holds a special place in my heart um I, yeah, I, I I don't I don't know what else to say. I don't know what else to say except like I just was like so proud and and I know like there like I've worked with really really cool brands, but there's something about this one that feels like it's it's a lot more than just a product that they want you to buy and 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 I even remember remember when I came back and I was speaking to someone from the La Roche team here and I was just explaining to her like how incredible this trip was for me to be able to fully immerse myself in the brand. I just remember saying like whether or not I work with you guys next year or the year after, I'll always have something from La Roche in my in my skincare arsenal just because I now fully understand what they're about and I I believe in them. I believe in the brand. Um, yeah, and especially since now there's like a lot of skincare brands. I guess it's like the cool thing to do after makeup, you know, because there was like a stage where makeup was the thing. And now there's lots more people coming up with um, skincare lines. And I get it. I get it. But at the same time, I'm just like, but La Roche, La Roche, they're the ones. Um, and with that, can I just come in close because I want to talk to you about a product that has changed the game for me. And I want to cry because I was going to not touch it. I actually was like not going to try it or give it a shot. I just thought it wouldn't be the right one for me. I thought in order for you to use it, you, you need it to have like really bad acne. Um, and that is the uh, Effacla Serum. So the lady who did the facial scan um, and broke down like what issues I have on my on my skin on my face um, she was very clear that the number one thing and it was it was actually there she wasn't even very clear the machine was very clear texture was a number one problem and on the trip there was this um, dermatologist they brought in lots of people from across the world um, dermatologists skin specialists um, skin bloggers influencers lots of lots of lots of people and so the lady they brought in from south africa her name i'm gonna link her down below but um dr knox actually that's not her full name but if i say it i will definitely butcher it but we were calling her knox um and when i was looking at her skin i was like my goodness it must feel good to just you know have such great skin but also i imagine as a dermatologist you must have pressure to have good skin and she and so i was saying like yeah because i just I always have these little spots, you know, from afar I might look okay, but when you come in close, there are all these little bumps. I'm going to put up pictures of what that was before, okay? So, there we go. And I was on a bus when I took these photos because she was like, oh no, what you have is called comedonal, comedonal acne. So it's just like uh, surface acne that's probably like non-inflammatory acne. Um, and the easiest, that's like a quick remedy, like that's easy to solve. Just uh, one of the things you could get your hands on is the Effa Class Serum and just start using that. Um, 
every day and just see how that works because you just want to like resurface your skin you know like a mild exfoliator that's what you're looking for and in my head i was like oh i thought like that was only if you have like you know like deep like serious acne but i'll try it and i didn't even use it every day at first because i was like oh i want to pace myself with this and i want to take my time in 10 days time i even remember like i was i'd wash my face and i'm like i don't feel them as much i don't feel them as much oh my goodness i don't want to jinx it before i pick up the phone and like take another picture so i don't know what i thought like i was like what if i just between the bathroom and the the phone what if like one pops up <laughs> but i was like quickly just go without like i don't know moving too much and i was taking the after just look at that so look at the two photos next to each other so again the first one i took on a bus and so maybe it had like a tint to it like a blue tint from the bus window and the second one i took in front of my window the one i'm standing in front of actually in my bedroom 10 days after that's how much of a difference the ethyl class are made here it is actually it does match my kitangela glass glassware so it's extra special to me <laughs> so um yeah that's it and expiration date because that's one of the things i looked at because i'm like oh what if this is one of the ones that like you have to use in like six weeks and then you have to repurchase it because it's not as potent anymore no ma'am 12 months so excited i'll link this for you thankfully this is a product that came into the market maybe two months ago not even that it just it 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 wasn't here at the start of the year but they just brought it into the market so you should be able to get your hands on this but i'm so happy because this is one of the products that we were gifted in our little um goodie bags there we go you can see right there what does it say it says Effica Ultra Concentrated Serum, Anti Imperfection, Pore Refining, Daily Peeling. And actually, that's another thing that I didn't even realize was an issue I had like pores. Let's just try and get that lighting down. It's a little bit darker, but it's okay. Um, yeah, it's got so this, and I remember even trying to research a little bit more about it. It's got LHA's growth glycolic acid and there's another acid it's got in here i can't now i think salicylic acid i might be wrong but it's also got niacinamide which like will help calm things and it's um it's got the thermal spring water um oh obsessed. clearly i have makeup on but i'm still gonna come in close just so you see it it's now been maybe another week since I took those photos, I have, oops, sorry, I have um, makeup on and uh, and so I just want to put that as a disclaimer, but I've been using, I've just been using that um, regularly. But there it is. And that's the same side actually. I'm showing you the same side that I've been showing on the before and after photos. Uh, but I'm just really happy. Mm -hmm. I actually, they also gifted us a number of other products, but there are two that I want to highlight. And these two are ones that I bought. Um, the first, and they're not here, but I actually even kind of spoke to the team here and they say that they will bring them in next year. I know that's so far, but like I just, maybe you're going to travel and you'll be, you might be able to get your hands on this. But the first thing that I got was retinol serum. Now, because of how much respect i have for this brand i didn't even question where i want to be getting my retinol i knew it had to be la roche posay and i mean i know there's other great brands out there so i don't want to be like oh this is the only brand that's amazing in the world i know there's like amazing brands out there but just because i've seen what they're about like i've seen i've seen how much work goes into their products and how that must have been the wind jeez that was loud uh, uh, but also how their focus is really just changing lives and focusing on people with like real severe skin conditions too not just like for like perfect glowy skin without any like comedonal acne but like when you get down to it people whose lives have been impacted negatively by 
whatever skin issues they have or skin conditions they have. Um, and so they've really gone into form formulations and like just the science and technology around that. We actually even had a factory tour, but we were not allowed to film. But we did have a factory tour and that was actually really cool too. Um, so I, I just knew like I, like I, I had to get the retinol from La Roche-Posay. Um, it says, is there an English version? No, this is anti-wrinkle concentrate regenerating resurfacing. Um, and actually, Dr. Knox was gave me like a, a little uh, routine to follow. She was like, do this and then do that. Because I've been tagging her on my Instagram whenever I'm like giving updates on my skin. And then she'll DM me like, oh my God, that's amazing. So now try this, try that. And I'm like, yes, sir. <laughs> so excited about that. The other thing that two women have told me about Hallie and Karen have both told me about this product um, and I actually saw it being used when we were this is not it I'm gonna cry I'm gonna cry I'm actually gonna cry I'm gonna cry I'm crying <laughs> I have stayed with this for weeks, <laughs> not months. I was going to say months. Okay. Ah! Ah! I want to scream. This, have I, did I leave it somewhere? I can't believe I bought this and not the right thing. Oh my gosh. <sighs> How disappointing. What I was excited to show you is not this. This is can't even read it out I'm just so upset <laughs> I can't I won't read it out it's just it's a sunscreen yeah what I was excited to show you was a spray sunscreen oh my god I can't believe it and I was so excited because I actually bought this from a chemist in the town in the actual town La roche Posay, and I just thought like oh what a beautiful place to buy a beautiful product and I have first of all I have this here I thought I was bu buying the spray and it's the one that you can put after your makeup um, it's mattifying and it doesn't leave any white spots and so if you wanted to just touch up your sunscreen or maybe you forgot to put it at the start of your makeup you can just put it after and now we are all gonna have to wait until they bring it to Kenya man what a disappointment like I feel like I'm ending this on not a am I sure just can you just give me a sec I'm just I'm gonna be right back I've checked every corner that I could have possibly put it but I just, I didn't put it anywhere. I just bought the wrong product. And I, <laughs> moral of this story, I feel like this is, this is France's big like, haha, jokes on you after you've been like, you know, not talking so nicely about our country. You take that. There's that product that you thought you bought, but actually you didn't. <laughs> anyway, it's okay. I'm not just gonna have to go back to Paris. <laughs> hey, okay, fine, I'll come back, Paris, okay? I'll come back, France, I'll come back, and I'll buy the right product, and this time, I won't just read it and think, that must, and it even says here, it says here, anti-shine gel cream. I wanna smack myself. But in my defense, what was in front of this product was the spray. It was in front of the product, the spray. Am I sure I didn't, I, but where else could I have put it? But it was in front and it's, it just looked, it was the one. So I was like, oh, so let me grab what's behind it. This must be it. Was it it? It was not. I always just want to find that receipt and confirm as if, and then what? And then what am I going to do if I did actually buy the right one? What am I doing? I just, clearly, I'm still hang up on the fact that I got the wrong product, but it's okay. It's okay, it's fine. I'll get over it, I'll go back to France and I'll get the right one at some point down the line. <laughs> Imagine if I just like bought a ticket just to get 
this that would be that would be an expensive bottle of sunscreen um anyway thank you so much for watching everyone and i hope you enjoyed my parisian chronicles um and i would love to know if you have been to paris or if you've been to france what are your thoughts like what did you what did you think about that city paris specifically and um especially what's hyped like when you think when you look at like you know and it made me even wonder i wonder what's hyped here that people come and they're like that's it that's it but i don't know like giraffe center and like playing with giraffes is pretty cool pretty cool even for someone who's been here for all my life and i did it like as a baby i have pictures that my mom took when i couldn't have been more than four years old and it still was like still today it's like exciting whenever i go there or the elephant sanctuary it's cool right i don't know you tell me if you've been to nairobi and like were you excited or disappointed like what 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 were your thoughts um and if you've been to paris what were your thoughts i'd be keen to hear um but i'm gonna bid you farewell now and i'm gonna cry myself a river over this darn sunscreen that i did not buy <laughs> bye guys